morning, Kennedy Dragons. We are glad that you are here. Today is Thursday, uh, February the 3rd, 2022. It's the 109th day of school. I'm Mr. Butcher. It's my job to keep you guys safe so that you can show us how excellent you can be. Hopefully, you've left your average at home or on the bus and you are ready, which means having being in the right place at the right time with the right stuff, to have a respectful, which means treating others the way you want to be treated, and responsible, which means doing your job with a smile on your face and giving perfect effort. Ready to have a respectful and responsible day. Speaking of responsibilities, our first responsibility is to be ready to show respect for the rights that we have in this country. We do this by daily saying the Pledge of Allegiance, our school pledge, as well as doing our moment of silence. When we do our pledges out of respect, we want to stop what we're doing, stand up tall, put our hands over our hearts like this. We want to say the pledge loudly, clearly, and with pride. If you guys would please stand for the pledge and remain, sta remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the Kennedy School Pledge. I pledge myself as a Kennedy Dragon to be ready for the day ahead of me. I'll be respectful of myself, my teachers, and all others I meet throughout the day. I promise to be responsible for myself, my actions, and my learning. I'll work my hardest to be the best dragon I can be. Second responsibility that we have every morning is to try to keep each other safe by slowing down the spread of germs. We do this by frequently washing our hands. When we wash our hands, we want to use soap and water. If you do not have access to soap and water, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer will be sufficient. And when we wash our hands, we want to get all parts of our hands, the palms of our hands, the backs of our hands, in between our fingers, our fingertips, our wrists, and our thumbs. When we wash our hands, we want to make sure that we're doing it for at least 20 seconds. Let's model what good hand washing looks like now. Do it with the palms of your hands. Get the back of your hand. Get the back of your other hand. Get in between your fingers. Get your fingertips. Get your other set of fingertips. Get your thumb. Get your other thumb. Get your wrist. And get your other wrist. And now your hands are nice and clean. Now that we've done our pledges, we've done our moment of silence, we've modeled hand washing, let's show respect for those that have birthdays today. Quite a few birthdays. Happy birthday to Elena Vang, who's 11. Autumn Hill is 10. Aiden Yang is 9. Layla Slavic is 8. Edward Porter is 8. Nehemiah Dansby is 7. And Miss Hurst has her birthday today as well. Happy birthday to you guys. We'll make sure you get your birthday. Our free. third responsibility each morning is to make our lunch choice. Lunch for today, beef and cheese nachos, lettuce and tomato, Tex-Mex black beans, and orange wedges. If you don't want the nachos, you can always get PB&J or the yogurt and mine. All right, each February, National Black History Month serves as both a celebration and a powerful reminder that black history is American history, black culture is American culture, and black stories are essential to the ongoing story of America, all including our faults, our struggles, our progress, and our aspirations. Shining a light on black history today is an important to understanding ourselves and growing stronger as a nation as it's ever been. Today's African American in history that changed our world is Gordon Parks. Gordon Parks was a U.S. author, photographer, film director, and musician. He documented the everyday lives of African Americans at a time when few people outside the black community were familiar with their lives. Parks was born on November 30, 1912 in Fort Scott, Kansas. He was the youngest of 15 children and grew up on his family's farm. After the death of his mother, Parks went to live with his sister in St. Paul, Minnesota. In 1928, Parks eventually dropped out of school and worked various jobs including waiter and pianist. Parks' interest in photography was inspired by a photo essay he read about migrant farm workers. He began to read all he could about photography and bought his first camera. After he moved to Chicago, 
Parks began taking photos of life among poor Americans on the South Side. He was awarded a fellowship because of these photos. This fellowship was a grant of money to help him keep, help him keep taking more photographs. In 1942, he became a photographer at the Farm Security Administration, one of the New Deal programs. It was during this period that he took his best-known photograph, American Gothic. This photo features an African-American cleaning woman with a mop and a broom standing in front of an American flag. It was a reference to a painting of the same name by an artist named Grant Wood. Wood's painting from 1930 features a white man and woman standing in front of their har farmhouse holding a pitchfork. In 1949, Parks became the first African-American to be a staff photographer for Life magazine. During the next two decades, Parks became known for his photos from American life, including athletes, artists, the black Muslim movement, and activists of the civil rights movement. Parks was awarded the National Medal of Arts in 1988, and he died on March 7, 2006 in New York, New York. Today's famous American from black history is Gordon Parks author, photographer, film director, born November 30th, 1912, died March 7th, 2006. It's time for our writing and vocabulary activity for the week. Here's our picture of the week yesterday. We asked you for verbs. Walking, standing, looking, gazing, racing, talking, singing, breathing, sneaking, sightseeing, wrestling. Those are all verbs from Miss Ballard's class. Miss Kinney had climbing, wearing, trying, and then, of course, Ms. Ham had some writing activities that includes their verbs. Lincoln the lion attempts to think of ways he could be taller so he can munch the delicious leaves at the top of the tree. First, he tries to climb the tree. He can't climb the tree because it's too slippery from a recent rain. Next, he bolts towards the tree and leaps as high as he can, but he falls short of the leaves he wants. Then he gathers up as many animals as he can he stacks the animals on top of each other so he can climb up them. Unfortunately, the animals are extremely uncoordinated and they topple to the ground. Excellent job, Miss Ham's class. Miss Kinney had the lion is trying to jump on the giraffe to play with it, but the giraffe laid down on the lion and the lion fell off the stilts and broke his back. That's Micaiah. Excellent job. Uh, Mr. Um, McCoy had the lion on stilts is brave, psychotic, and willing to risk his life. Today we are looking for adjectives and adverbs. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. They, and adverbs are words that describe um, verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Uh, we're looking for those descriptive words. They tell us what kind, how many, which one, uh, to what extent. Um, so you can have great writing like Leighton in Miss uh, Kinney's class who wrote, the lion is wearing stilts so he can get closer to the giraffe to kiss her for Valentine's Day. So let's come up with um, our adjectives and our adverbs and have some good, uh, really creative and descriptive writing. All right, it's time for our math problem of the week. Uh, K1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, put your answers on the whiteboard. Make sure you put your name on the answers. All right, here's the K1 math problem of the week. Miss Santiago has lost her marbles. They were in a jar and they spilled out all over the floor. How many marbles do you see? How many groups of marbles can you make? So here's the picture you look at. That's how many marbles. You gotta tell me how many you see and how many groups can you make. Here's the two, three problem of the week. How would you arrange rectangles with the areas seen on the board to fill the board? And here give you examples. So they give you some areas and you have to shade those in rectangles that will help fill the board completely in different colors. Um, you can't really see this one that great, but the one on the whiteboard is very good. So do that one now. All right, here's the four or five math question of the week. Using some of the digits from one to nine, at most one time each, place a digit in each box to make a true equation with the smallest possible sum. You must put a digit in each box. You cannot use zero. So there you go. You gotta think through this one. A lot of trial and error. You gotta really know your fractions and how to do uh, mixed numbers. Time for our message of the day. Today's message is on conscious. John Wayne was a great American actor. Listen to what he has to say to us today. There's right, and then there's wrong. You got to do one or the other. You can do one 
and you're living. You can do the other, and you may be walking around, but you're as dead as a beaver hat. John Wayne is saying that when you do something we know is wrong, it makes us feel bad inside. On the other hand, when we do what we want to do, and we know that's right, then we feel good about ourselves. If you're in doubt about what's right and what's wrong, talk to a parent, a counselor, a teacher, or someone at your place of worship. And always remember that the great American philosopher Jiminy Cricket says, let your conscience be your guide. With something to think about, I'm Mr. Butcher. Make today your masterpiece or not. Remember, the choice is yours. And you guys all know if it's right or if it's wrong. And if you're not sure if it's right or wrong, don't do it. Don't take the risk. It's that simple. You have that deep down feeling. It's called. They call it your conscience. I call it your heart, but it's also your mind. You know the difference between right and wrong. Just choose to do the right thing. If it's not something you'd want to happen to you, then don't do it to someone else. If it's not something that you think should be said, then don't say it. All right, like I said, there's not a mask mandate in place, but there are certain times that you are required to wear your mask, like when you're riding the bus. The bus is a requirement to wear your mask. Or if you've been in close contact with someone in your class that has COVID and you're uh, quarantining at school in a mask. Or if you got a big cut on your nose like I do and you just want to cover it up, make sure you wear your mask the right way. You put it over your nose, put it over your mouth and your chin, tight around your ear so it doesn't fall down. You guys have a great day. Okay. That is all we have for announcements, so please help me. Me and your teachers keep you safe. That is our job. And your job is to help us keep you safe. And you can help us by being a ready, respectful, and responsible student who is focused on graduating in the year. Because when you are a ready, respectful, and responsible student focused on graduation, you, you are, are boldly committed, committed to student, student success. success. I love you very much. Have a great day. Time for our read aloud of the day. Uh, like I told you, it is February, which is Black History Month. So each book that we are going to be reading during the month of February is got an African American um, author or it is, um, the main character is an African American. Today's book is Ellington Was Not a Street. It is by Ento, en, Entazaki Shenge is the author, and the illustrator is Kadir Nelson. The author is the person that wrote the words, the illustrator is the person that drew the pictures. As I read, I'm gonna model what good readers do, um, which is read fluently. Fluently means that you read the words correctly at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow, and with expression. And as I read, you guys need to practice what good readers do as they're listening to the book that's being read to them or as if they're reading it. You want to listen for um, the characters, who or what the, st the story is about, the uh, setting, where and when the story is taking place, and the sequence of events, what happens first, next, and last. And then ask yourself questions about each page. What just happened? Why did it happen? How did it happen? What do I think is going to happen next? Ellington was not a street. It hasn't always been this way. Ellington was not a street. Robeson, no mere memory. So we got a man coming in and a little girl right there. Hmm. Dubois, what walked up my father's stairs? So there's another man walking up the stairs named Dubois. Hum some tune over me sleeping in the company of men who changed the world. It wasn't always like this. Why Ray Barreto used to be a side man and Dizzy's hair was not always gray. I remember, I was there. I listened in the company of men. So you can see, here's the the author, or the person, the um, person telling the story. The author is telling it from this little girl's perspective, point of view. Politic, politics as necessary as collards. Music even in our dreams. 
Our house was filled with all kind of folks. Our windows were not cement or steel. All those people at the house that she's seeing this on. Our doors opened like our daddy's arms, held us safe and loved. Children going in the company of men, old southern men and young slick ones. Sonny Till was not a boy. The Clovers, no ragtag orphans. Our crooners, we belong to a whole world. Crooners are singers. You see them singing. Karuma was no foreigner. Virgil Aikens was not the only fighter. It hasn't always been this way. Ellington was not a street. Ellington was not a street. 